Hey guys, and welcome back to Resident Evil Village. Last time we left off, uh, we were <clears throat> exploring the village. Um, I can't really remember what else we were doing because this was like, I don't know, two weeks ago. Um, editing back through my last crop of videos, that's right, we was exploring town because there was a new weapon apparently available to us, which is a uh, fan dabby dozy. But yeah, uh, there was a shadow play update which um, disabled my microphone, and I didn't catch that error until three day, uh, three videos later. And only when I've been going through and editing the videos in sequence have I discovered this problem. So shadow play strikes once again. Now. I do love coming back through the village. I love it. I love the fact uh, everything changes. You know, you got some new enemies popping up. And these guys as well, they never really like explain too much about um, these guys unless I missed it. I have completed the game at this point, by the way. Um, and if you want an early verdict of the game. Oh man, <laughs> I loved it. But yeah, these weird kind of rejected subjects here. Kind of like zombies. I think some people call them ghouls. They're basically zombies, I suppose. I guess the lichens are the next evolution. Right, anyway, but we did find the slab, which means we can go back and get the treasure. Ah, uh, we've still got Luther's key as well. Interesting. Cool. And that's what I like. This game had like a really nice little Metroidvania feel to it. You know, the fact that... Um, you know, as you go through, so many different paths open it up. Uh, recently played through uh, Metroid for the first time, Super Metroid. I think the OG one is a little bit too old for me to go back to. Um, but I did play through Super Metroid uh, on the Switch, and I really, really enjoyed it. There's also some fish here, which I completely missed as I was exploring this place. Uh, I actually found these fish when I was playing with um, the missus. Uh, well, should I say she found them? And uh, I thought that was quite interesting that these fish are just stashed up here. It's kind of obvious, really. Um, and one of my burning questions going through this game was, is there actually enough um, meat to get all the upgrades in one run? And yes, yes there is. In fact, there's actually more than enough. So, you're covered. You're good. Everything's gravy. Would have been nice if they... I'm hoping, like, the next Resident Evil... I don't know, Resident Evil 9 is going to just expand on this completely. But I don't know if we're going to get a, a setting like this again. This setting just seemed to have everything we wanted, you know? A village, it had like the weird vampires and, and werewolves, which apparently just seemed to go together so bloody well. Uh, and it really does tie into Resident Evil 7 really nicely. Yeah, every time there's fish, from what I can remember, there's that yellow cord uh, dripping into the water. Not sure what that's about. Yellow means, you know, look at me in these Resident Evil games. Now uh, here I'm looking for those nodding um, targets. Yeah, those weird warding goats. Goats of warding. There we go. Um, I haven't got them all yet. I am going through a second playthrough. Although I've literally just got up to the part where we get attacked by all the werewolves in the beginning. Really enjoying the second playthrough. Um... Oh man, does this game have some good unlockable weapons and such. I also really like the map. The map is wonderful in this game. This is how to do a map. I mean, it's not perfect. There are some issues, but it's not bad. And I like every time you come back to this village as well, something's different. And it really does, um, it really is worth exploring everything as well. Like, you might as well go back through all the areas. Because there's plenty of stuff, you know, that's easily missable. And I, and I, I get the feeling, like, certain uh, loot and objects appear as well. This is really weird doing commentary. Oh, goat. Got him. There we go. Pretty sure my missus found that one as well. 
Now, she completed this game like a week before me. Everybody completed this game before me. Like, seriously. Uh, I had to basically hide from the internet for over a week because spoilers for this game were everywhere. Now, the ending was pretty controversial, but I, I think people, most people seem to have enjoy, enjoyed the ending. Um, but for me, I'm really thankful it didn't get spoiled because, yeah, well, yeah, we're obviously not going to go into that, but it, it, it was not what I was expecting. There was some really nice juicy twists and turns. Um, but from a New Game Plus standpoint, this game has so much to come back and play through again. All the new weapon upgrades and um, you even unlock a shop like Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake. You even get that shop come back and... Uh, you can, like, through earning achievements and uh, completing challenges, you get money which you can spend in the game menu to unlock things to buy from the Duke. And it's just a really good time. One second, guys. And we're back. Right, uh, just had a fire marshal turn up to check all the fire gear. Which is nice, you know. So I thought this was like a cool little area to do through here as well. One of the things that they did really well in this game was they made uh, a small, well, yeah, I would say that's fair. A relatively small map feel pretty vast because it was very dense with things to explore. Um, and I just, I don't know, I'm not the world's biggest fan of open world games. I do like some of them, but with this game... I I wanted more, you know. I mean, just look how much effort they've put into this game, and to think that they, um, you know, dropped this game what three years after Resident Evil Seven. That's some pretty impressive going, if you ask me. Yeah, all these little offshoots and doors that open up. That up, oh, whoops. Hello. So say I can't remember how we took this guy out. We went for the knife. Of course we did. Bullets are precious, although not that precious in this game. <laughs> Almost like this little bastard wants to live or something. I need your meat for her. You're going in a stew. Cheers, boss. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. Although, technically, I did forget about that. So. Ha. Right, yeah. We got him. We got him. We got the beast. I'm going to, as I said, uh, I'm on holiday on July the 4th. Well, around that time. And I do intend to go through this game with a fine tooth comb. I am going to go back through it again. Oh, yeah. We got this big fella, didn't we? I remember this big chap. This big burly chap that seems like he's uh, going to do some, some good damage to you, but... <laughs> He's actually, like, beyond trivial. And the biggest problem with him is the penny does drop eventually. He's kind of guarding that area. He can't actually leave. Which I thought was a little bit silly. I guess he's kind of like Lady D and... Uh, um, well, I guess Mr. X and all those kind of big burly characters where you kind of get the feeling that they're going to be on your ass all the time, but they're not. They're confined to like a certain area. Once the penny drops and I realise that he has like a little wall that he can't follow you any further. This guy is kind of laughable. You could easily do this guy about losing any health whatsoever. But hindsight's a beautiful thing. 
But at least he gives me uh, a reason to use up some of these bloody pipe bombs. Whoop. Yeah, he's starting to look pretty messed up. Ugly bastard. I mean, look at him. Big toothy grin. I don't know what he's got to be so happy about. Maybe the sweet release of death that he knows is coming. Now this rifle is a bit of an unsung hero. Ooh. This rifle is a pretty bloody good damage dealer, to be honest. It's quite reliable throughout the whole game as well. Oh god. I mean, I think even up until the end, we have a good stock of ammo for this thing. So I didn't find that many uses for it. A long range weapon. Very few instances of needing a long range weapon. But there we go. Blew the back of his head off eventually. Now we've taken the big boy. We've got all the little chaffy weaklings to deal with. That's fine. I actually really enjoyed fighting all of the enemies in this game because it was fun. It was cool getting little uh, bonuses and pickups. And I thought the gunplay in this game was really good. Now I am talking about keyboard and mouse here on the PC. Uh, I know my buddy uh, Jimmy is not having a great time um, with the PlayStation controller. But keyboard and mouse, I thought the controls were excellent. Yeah, you know, I never had any trouble, you know, landing headshots and whatnot. And any misses were just me being useless. You gotta check for those bird houses as well. Um, Chris mentioned them. And they're literally everywhere. There we go. We get the chalice. Claudia. So that was her sister, I guess. Her sister that didn't survive. And she was never the same. So we've got all this meat. Now, meat does sell for a good amount of coin. I will say that those special, um, or should I say rare pieces of meat, or unique pieces of meat, I guess, um, you only get one of each of those, but it's very possible that I did actually miss some. But I actually, uh, you know, managed to find, I think, everything. And we had, we had meat left over, let's just say that. Now what I do, I love this inventory system as well. Why does Capcom keep taking it away? I mean, Resident Evil 6, as I've said, didn't have an inventory system at all. It was rubbish. And the weapons were semi-hidden collectibles. Uh, you could miss them. It was pretty hard to miss them, but you could. Um, and there was no upgrades for the weapons and things either. Uh, Resident Evil 5, I mean, the inventory in that game was just crap. It was the, probably the second worst part of that game, apart from the partner AI. I don't like to say Sheva's AI, because it's the partner AI. Because you can play... Everybody rags on Sheva, okay? Says she's shit, blah, blah, blah. She actually, in my opinion, wasn't a bad character, but her AI was awful. Now, the reason I don't specifically blame Sheva is because if you play the game again as Sheva and Chris is the AI partner, he's just as bloody useless. But then they did um, decide to implement a AI partner system apparently less than six months before release. Yeah, we can now build mines. Uh, this is one of the first games as well. Well, first Resident Evil games where I can realistically think that the mines are actually really useful. I mean, you get landmines in five, which are useful against that bat creature. 
and you get uh, you get them in five. Oh no, in four as well. Do you get them in? I can't remember if you get them in six. Look at all that money though, and that's another thing as well. You get so much money through this playthrough. <laughs> Do you know it's worth uh, uh, whatever Stand you're willing to buy it for? You know it's worth. But yeah, landmines in this game really work useful. Stock. They're really good. They stun the enemies. Which is nice. I don't it obviously doesn't say how much damage they do, but it must be considerable. Here's me deciding what to buy. What can I buy? Uh, I did go for all of them, like I say, but I really wanted the movement speed because that's, you know, I mean, more health and like, I mean, health items aren't exactly rare in this game. Nothing is on this difficulty anyway. Nothing is rare. You know, you're never that desperate for ammo and stuff like that. I think there was one bit later on um, where we started to run out of our bullets, but it was... It wasn't that difficult. We had so many weapons. But, um, yeah, there was always something to use. <clears throat> yeah, I never understood why it says 10 and 15 there. But he doesn't have 15. He only has 10. Yeah, he's got 10 in stock. But why is it got of 15? I don't know. Thank Never made a lot of sense purchase. to me. There was also a surprising amount of weapons in this game. Way more than I thought there would be. Which is good. There's even more weapons on a second playthrough. Which is really cool. Hey then. Okay, so let's start using this new key of ours. We need the six to go up there. Yeah, that was perplexing. That, yeah, I remember this. I was wondering why that was still red. Even though that is the door that held the broken slab. So we've already, like, got that. So it should be blue. So I did wonder if there was anything back here. But no, I, I don't know whether it's a glitch or whether maybe we just didn't get close enough. But then we must have got close enough. We must have gone inside this thing uh, because we got the slab. But it, I didn't just, I don't know, didn't register. Not sure why. But, you know, it's not a big thing. I did mention in a later video, I don't know if it's one of the ones that has no commentary, but it's interesting that you never really get many bugs in Capcom games. <clears throat> you know, you look at all these other big AAA games that come out absolutely fucking broken and, you know, they don't actually deserve the money they're asking for them. I've never really had that problem with the Resident Evil game. And not that I can think of, anyway. Oh, yeah. I remember this fella. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? Just how much damage Ethan can take and keep taking and still stay alive. Interesting. Hmm. Look at this thing. This thing is amazing. Now, this is a proper werewolf. I don't know if this is what the lichens are going to eventually mutate into. But these things. My god, that's what I was saying. The enemies are so much fun to fight in this game. They're great. I can't wait to dial up the difficulty. Ooh, yes. Mind. And these things are tough as well. You want to put that 9 milli away, so there we go. Something with a little bit more bite to it. Yeah, landmines are never a bad shout, to be honest. But again, uh, unfortunately, the AI is really predictable and really manipulatable. You can manipulate the hell out of the AI in this game. All you gotta do is hide in a building, and he kinda like loses interest. Shoot him in the ass, drop him mine, 
And I think we do abuse this quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I guess part of this mutation is an extra brain mass. That would be a cool little uh, bio actually, wouldn't it? Imagine that. Imagine if um, they actually uh, got smarter. Much smarter. I also think this game, you'll see later on, uh, this might be the last... Her uh, ah, the wounds are severe. I won't last much longer. I can hear it shuffling about outside. It barely flinched when I shot it. I feel like it's toying with me. That isn't a wolf. Well, I mean, kind of. It's a wolf. Kind of. Kind of a big wolf. Still, I won't lie down like a dog. If I can get to the old water mill, I can stop it. I can protect you. It's so close. Damn, I'm so cold. My legs won't work. I'm sorry, Louisa. Please forgive me. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty heavy stuff. But he is indeed correct. There is a... Uh, Spicy meatball waiting for us at the wa water wheel. Something that I wasn't expecting. I mean, it says on the map, as we've seen. Um, you know, it says something about a weapon if you mouse over the box. But I didn't think we'd get what we are going to get. And again, as I was saying earlier, I love how when we come back, everything changes. Because now Monroe is the target. And you can see this pollution everywhere. Which is really cool. You can see this sickly thick sludge just coating the place. And I like it. Definitely uh, needs to be cleaned out and purged. Now, unfortunately, it does seem that we are uh, too late to save <laughs> the residents of this place. But, you know. Oh, hello. I guess not all the residents are gone. Evening. Just skulking around. Not sure how smart these guys are either. I'm guessing they don't have their own thoughts. Oof, God. He's dead. I would really like uh, a Resident Evil set in Raccoon City with this first person view. I would love that. We really are down to like our last magazine here. Uh, in fact, we're down. Yeah, we really are down. But as I said, you know, there's always materials. Materials themselves aren't rare. But yeah, this this game probably is the last hurrah for my my 1060. It really, really struggles in sections of this game. Yeah, and we've got that door over there that we can use that key for. So it'd be rude not to check that place out. I think I derp out here for quite a while, trying to remember how to get back there. Well, that might be in one of the other videos, actually. Now, this red door here really pissed me off. Because it's such a cock block to your progress. Oof. I was like, holy fucking shit. 
And I love the weapons. Look how ornate they are. Look how gilded they are. These things are beautiful weapons. They're not all rusty pieces of shit that have, you know, been, you know, scraped around the bottom of a rusty bog for a while. They're really nice weapons. It does 1200 damage as well, so, you know, it's not bad. It is fiddly to use. At least I found it fiddly to use. Because there's two types of ammo. There's flashbangs and there's grenade rounds. Um, the flash, like, switching between the two... Uh, in Remake 1 and, uh, or should I say Remake 2 and 3, I never had an issue with switching ammo types, right? In this game, it really didn't seem to work very well. And I think some of that came down to the fact that the ammo symbol, you know, for explosives and flash rounds, looks so fecking similar. But, you know, it's only a minor thing. God, I was so pissed at that door. I did wonder if we could open it up with a grenade launcher, but nope. And look, I think this is where I noticed all of this ooze everywhere as well. pulsating pus bubbling out of the snow. You have to ask yourself, how the fuck did Ethan go through what he went through and not get infected? That makes sense, does it? But then I guess you can make the argument that, you know, in Resident Evil, uh, you know, the OG games, uh, Chris, uh, Leon, Claire, um, Barry, Jill, they were all getting bitten, you know, and they were always fine. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I could see that side of the argument. But they did pour a hell of a lot of love and detail into this game. I do wonder if they went to some like old village or did they look at loads of uh, old photographs and things just to craft something that really looks this this old and ancient. Because they nailed it, man. They really did. And you got Duke back there as well, who's a genuinely cool character. Ah, yeah, I thought there might be something on the other side that we could shoot off or something to open it up, but nope. Keep guessing, Titan. You fool. And I thought, I know, I'll come in here and uh, go through. But you can't. You can't. Oh, I might have to add as well. Um, this video that we're watching here together. That's weird that we're watching this together. Um, this was after I hadn't played the game for about three or four days. Should I say four or five days, actually. So my memory of this game was very rusty. Oh, God, man. Right, so, Luther's Key. Switch up for close quarters. Little bit of cash. Nice little happy birthday poster. So this guy obviously makes musical instruments. It's cool because like everybody in this village seems to have somewhat of a purpose. Especially if you start reading some of these logs, you know. And there we have an interesting code. Hmm. Wow, this seems pretty 
freaking obvious, isn't it? I think I actually get this wrong. Thinking back. I'll never forget her fifth birthday. And then uh, the penny drops, like, wait, they bamboozled us. Yep. They gave you a fake six digit code, which I thought was actually really interesting. And I where? I know I saw a poster around here somewhere. It's interesting watching footage back and just how stupid you are. Ah, uh, post-commentary. There we go. Happy birthday.